Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening once more, and welcome to our continuing coverage of the Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft's flight to the International Space Station. I'm Dan Hewitt. I've been taking you through so far this morning, and will continue to do so until the spacecraft docks and delivers three new crew members to the International Space Station. We're coming to you live from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. You're looking inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where the team is looking over all of the systems controlled on board the station. They're led right now inside the room by Flight Director Paul Kanya. And the voice you'll hear talking to the astronauts on board the station will be Andreas Mogensen from the European Space Agency serving as our CAPCOM right now. At this moment, the Soyuz spacecraft is continuing to chase down the International Space Station. Right now, only about 17 kilometers behind it, closing in at a rate of about 26 meters per second while both fly just off the coast of Chile, about to cross over South America. As of this moment, we are less than 52 minutes away from the planned docking uh, to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Zvarya module on the uh, Russian segment of the International Space Station, and everything's proceeded smoothly. Uh, the crew was uh, able to lift off a little bit earlier this morning, right on time. Uh, that launch coming exactly at 7.42 and 40.49 seconds GMT. So here's a quick replay from that launch a little bit earlier. Again, the exact launch time, 7.42 and 40.49 seconds GMT, or 12.42 over on Baikonur, 2.42 a.m. here in Houston. Uh, the Soyuz space, or the Soyuz rocket, executing the eight minute, 49 second climb to orbit without any issue, all three stages performing as expected, eventually delivering the Soyuz spacecraft into its preliminary orbit. It's a picturesque day over there in Kazakhstan. We were treated to clear views of the rocket all the way uphill, getting good performance calls the whole way up. Again, this happened a little bit earlier this morning, um, just two hours and 35 minutes ago, and set the Soyuz on its fast track trip to the International Space Station and where we sit at this very moment. Inside the Soyuz, three crew members are still seated. One NASA astronaut and two Russian cosmonauts, Mark Vandehei, Oleg Novitsky, and Pyotr Dubrov, the trio making their way to the orbiting laboratory. It's the second flight for Vandehei, the third for Novitsky, and the first for Dubrov, as he's looking to join the cadre of uh, space flyers that have lived on board the International Space Station, these three bound for about a six-month mission. As mentioned, everything's proceeded smoothly so far. The Soyuz executing all of its different burns, starting off with the delta velocity burn, a major firing of the station's main engine and the primary burn to get it on its way, uh, that one lasting uh, for a little over a minute and a half, and that was executed uh, successfully uh, just shortly after uh, making it on orbit, about 39 minutes into their mission. Uh, since then, uh, three additional impulse burns to continue closing the gap between Soyuz and station have been executed successfully and puts us to where we sit right now. We've got about two more or three more impulse burns to go, and then we'll get into uh, some of the final uh, rendezvous steps, uh, starting with the fly around, station keeping, and then final approach. And we'll get into those as we get a little bit closer. All of this, again, setting up for an expected docking at 6.07 a.m. Central, 7.07 a.m. Eastern Time. And we're getting some live views from the International Space Station. That dot in the middle of your screen is the Soyuz as it continues to close, close in. minus you're hearing performance calls from the crew on board. Copy. Oleg Novitsky in the center seat is the Soyuz commander. 
conversing back and forth with flight controllers in Koryov just outside of Russia and the Russian Mission Control Center. They just passed the 12 kilometer and closing mark, closing in again at about 16.6 meters per second at this time. Uh, range 11.5 and range rate is minus 16.1. Copy. 11 and a half kilometers to go. They're going to continue closing up until this point. Again, everything is going to be done automated uh, using what's known as the Coors Rendezvous system. There are sets of antennas both on the Soyuz spacecraft, uh, known as the Coors NA. They're the active part of the automated rendezvous system. And then uh, passive antennas uh, on board the International Space Station. There are sets on uh, both the Zvezda service module and on the Zarya uh, functional cargo block. Uh, we're using the ones on the Zvezda service module today. Uh, a little about 40 minutes ago, they were able to do checkouts of uh, two sets on both uh, the service module on the station and the active ones on the Soyuz, and those were uh, done successfully. And then once they were in uh, a little bit closer, uh, reaching about the 30-kilometer uh, distance, uh, they were able to uh, get a signal lock on. And so we have uh, good performance, good good feedback between uh, the active and the passive systems for this automated rendezvous. And again, everything will continue automated. The crew has the ability to take manual control and pilot uh, the Soyuz in if required, but everything looking good with an automated flight into station today. Range is 10 and range rate minus 13.2. Copy. So at this point, so you use less than 10 kilometers away from the International Space Station. We still have about three impulse burns, so just using that, uh, that main engine and then a couple of the thrusters on the so you spacecraft until we get there. Uh, those will take place over the next 20 minutes. And by that point, we'll get in a lot closer. Once we get to about 400 meters away from the space station expected to happen in about 23 minutes, uh, the Soyuz will execute what's known as the fly around. In this case, it'll be a pretty short one as they are going to. 13, 13, copy. Again, that fly around going to be pretty quick as they are going to approach from beneath. And they are headed right towards one of the Earth-facing ports on the station uh, known as Rosviet or MRM-1. It's on the Earth-facing side of the Zarya module. This graphic right here shows you the current layout of the International Space Station and all of the attached vehicles. Minus 11.3. This is what will look like in just about 43 minutes from now, following a successful docking. We'll have four uh, Russian spacecraft attached to the space station, two Progress cargo vehicles, and two crewed Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, the Cygnus resupply craft is currently berthed uh, to the Node 1 Earth facing port. And then of course, we have the Crew 1 Dragon, which just executed a relocation maneuver a little bit earlier this week currently docked to the zenith or the space-facing side of Node 2 or the Harmony module. Range is 8.5. Range rate inaudible. Copy. And we're getting the video now. Copy.
and once they dock, they're going to join the Expedition 64 crew still in progress. And we're going to temporarily have 10 people on board the International Space Station. So they're going to be joined uh, the two Sergeys, Sergei Rizhikov, the current station commander, and Sergei Kuchverkov. Uh, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens, she flew up with the Sergeys uh, on a Soyuz last uh, about six months ago and is set to come home just next week. Uh, and then we have the Crew-1 astronauts uh, with Mike Hopkins, the commander of Crew-1, uh, Victor Glover, Suichi Noguchi, and Shanna Walker. So seven on board right now. Pretty soon we'll have ten for what we call a handover, so a period of time where we have, uh, or in this case, a direct handover. So a new crew arriving before the previous one leaves. Um, and again, these are our three crew members still in that Soyuz on their way to the space station right now. Mark Van Hei, a NASA astronaut, making his second trip to the International Space Station. Oleg Novitsky, the Soyuz commander in the center seat and in the center of your picture, making his third long duration flight with this one. <coughs> and then Pyotr Dubrov making his first trip into space and his first long duration stay on board the station. At this moment, we are just about seven and a half kilometers away, continuing to close in right now at about nine meters per second. Range 7 kilometers, range rate minus 8.7. Copy. While the Soyuz continues to close in, we'll wait for some views as we continue to search the sky, and pretty soon we'll see it. But the crew members on board did have a pretty spectacular view of that launch themselves. This picture uh, already shared on Twitter uh, by JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi. He was able to snap this as the station flew overhead. And it was flying just behind or a little bit uh, behind the, the Soyuz at the time of launch and then leapfrogged over it uh, during its ascent into orbit. Uh, this was shared on Suichi's Twitter account. You can hop on at Astro Suichi uh, to follow his final weeks on board the International Space Station. And as always, head over to nasa.gov slash astronauts. Find out everybody who's on the International Space Station and follow their trips as they bring you uh, into what it's like to live and work every single day in space on those social media accounts. So pretty, pretty stellar view uh, from Suichi of the launch this morning. The range is 6 kilometers and the range rate minus 8.2. Copy. And you just heard the crew report they're less than 6 kilometers away now. They're going to continue closing in. We're expecting the next impulse burn or using. Uh, the main engine in this case on the Soyuz spacecraft that's coming up in about seven minutes. And that'll just be a short, uh, about a 15 to 17 second firing of that engine. And that's just going to continue to help them close in right now, approaching at about eight meters per second.
Дальность 5 300, скорость минус 8. The range is 5 uh, kilometers 300 meters, and uh, the range rate is minus 8. Copy. Soyuz MS-18 less than five kilometers away now from the space station, continuing to close in at about eight meters per second. Again, just a, a couple more impulse burns, so one using that main engine on the Soyuz and then uh, another using thrusters to continue to just close the gap until we get close to about 400 meters and then they'll execute a fly around. There's a number of steps that are taking place um, on board the space station. 4.7 and the range rate minus 8.1. Copy. So again, a couple of different procedures being executed here inside Mission Control to prepare the space station for the upcoming docking. Well, right now we have a very clear picture uh, on uh, in periscope and on the monitor, so there is no need for that. Copy. In about 10 minutes, the team here in Houston will be handing over attitude control, so controlling which way the station is pointing, which way it's flying uh, from the U.S. systems, which uses large gyroscopes called control moment gyros, or CMGs. They'll hand over the control over to their Russian counterparts uh, using the thrusters on the Russian segment. The third boon. The range is three. Uh, kilometers 900 meters and uh, the range rate is minus 8.1 so the cadeau repress should be illuminated already yes i confirm it is illuminated a3 copy at this point the so you just about 3.7 kilometers away continuing to close in at about eight meters per second, but as we were discussing, the attitude control of the station is going to get handed over uh, to the Russian mission controllers. They'll be using thrusters on the Russian segment throughout all of the final stages of docking. Uh, immediately after docking, they'll fire thrusters and then put ISS into free drift just to allow uh, any residual motion to dampen out between the two vehicles. 3.5 kilometers and the range rate minus 8.1 meters per second. Copy. And then after the hooks have closed on the Soyuz and the Mini Research Module 1 of the Rosviet module, they'll uh, get ready to hand control back over to the team here in Houston. We'll be back on those gyroscopes, but for the duration of all of the final approach, the docking and the immediate aftermath, we'll be using Russian thrusters to control the attitude of the International Space Station. For now, though, the Soyuz continuing to close in just about 3.1 kilometers away, still closing in at about 8.1 meters per second. The range is three kilometers and the range rate minus eight. Copy. 
standing by for the third burn. That core's automated rendezvous system continuing to feed the crew, feed the ground data on the range and the range rate. So the Soyuz right now about 2.7 kilometers away. Uh, closing in at just about 7.8 meters per second now. We're standing by for what's known as the impulse four burn. This will be a firing of about 17 seconds. And it looks like we're just now starting to get views from the Soyuz itself. That's the International Space Station you can see coming into view. We have maneuver. The station goes uh, down and to the left. 45 is the value copy. We are seeing that. And the Soyuz positioning itself for this impulse for a burn. I saw the moon. SKD activation 13, 37, 14, copy. Parameters are nominal. 13, 27, 27, SKD. SKD deactivated. 5.65 is the burn value. Copy. And you just heard them talk, the Escada, that's the main engine on the Soyuz spacecraft. That impulse for burn was just completed. And we got the report, it was a nominal burn. So there are two impulse burns remaining. Uh, the next one coming up in about two minutes, and then another one about three minutes after that. I can see the station through uh, the on the monitor, and I will use AGC mode. Copy. So the range is 1,700, and the range rate is minus 4.1. Well, it's much better. We can see it much better now. Yes, I agree. And it looks like we were able to lock that signal back up again. This is a view from the Soyuz looking straight at the International Space Station. Two. Uh, the range is 1,600 and uh, the range rate um, minus 4.2, copy. And two easy numbers to, to keep track of when looking at this view in the bottom left corner there, you see the 1.509 km, that is your range of the Soyuz away from the space station, and just below that, the closing rate in meters per second. The range is 
one kilometer, uh, 300 meters, and uh, the range rate is minus four. Copy. Soyuz MS-18 continuing to close in just about 1.1 kilometers away. We're expecting a docking right around 6.07 a.m. Central Time, 11.07 GMT. 100 meters and the range rate minus 3.7. Copy. Everything continues to proceed. As it has, we should be just under 26 minutes away from docking. Spacecraft now less than a kilometer away from the station. Again, we'll hit another major milestone once we're 400 meters away. Then it'll start executing the fly around maneuver that will begin lining it up with the docking port, the Rosviet module, after which it'll go into station keeping. Just a short period to make sure the spacecraft is aligned before the final approach begins. And then the spacecraft will continue to close in on the docking port, eventually slowing down to about a tenth of a meter per second before docking. And the range rate is 2.3. And uh, at 13.42.44, the depot war, um, engines or thrusters uh, were deactivated. Copy. And we can see the station very clearly. Copy. The range is 280 meters, and the range rate minus 2.4, and uh, at 13.49, the DPOR activated. Copy. Spacecraft still closing in. We did get confirmation that impulse number five was executed successfully. Uh, they activated and the range is 630 and the range rate meters and the range rate is one point minus 1.5. Copy. And we did just get confirmation impulse six. The final impulse burn was done successfully. So at this point, it has a little less than 200 meters to go until we get into the fly around mode. And at this point, the, the teams here in Houston doing our final go-no-go no go for docking, they'll get that before we get into the station keeping and final approach, working in lockstep with flight controllers and Corey off just outside of Moscow in the Russian Mission Control Center.
Далее 450, скорость минус 1,5. The range is 450 meters and the range rate minus 1,5. Copy. And the spacecraft now making an appearance on station cameras as it continues to close in just about 400 meters away. At 1346, uh, uh, 47, DPO started firing. Copy. The fly around has started. We confirm. And so confirmation that fly around maneuver has started right on time, 400 meters away from the station. This is going to line up the spacecraft with the docking port, the Rosviet module, also known as MRM-1 or Mini Research Module 1. Operation is blinking at 1347.18. Uh, the PO cut off, and uh, the range is 350, and range rate minus 0 0.7. Copy. Fly around is continued. Дальность триста, скорость ноль шестьдесят семь. The range is 300 meters, and the range rate, uh, closing rate, is minus 0 0.6 meters per second. Uh, we can see this station. It's uh, right in the middle of the crosshairs. Copy. 13.48.47. So the Cut off of DPO at the unintelligible time. Copy. Control cut 15. Copy. So the range is 270, and the closing rate is 0, uh, 53 minus 0, 0.53. Everything is nominal. Looking right through the crosshairs at the Russian segment of the International Space Station, right in the middle of the crosshairs right now is a Progress spacecraft docked to another port on the Russian segment. That's Progress 77P. Um, off to the left is one docked to the aft end of the very back part of the station, the back part of the Zvezda service module, that's 75 Progress. And then just above the crosshairs, you can see what looks very similar to those Progress spacecraft is a Soyuz. Uh, that is the one that uh, carried uh, Kate Rubens and the two Sergeys. Uh, Sergey. <clears throat> and the range rate is uh, minus zero five. Everything is nominal. Again, just getting a glimpse of that. Uh, the Soyuz that minutes. carried Sergey Rizhikov, Sergey Kuchverkov, and Kate Rubens. The docking port uh, for this Soyuz will be just to the right. We're going to see it continue to line up with the crosshairs as they continue this fly around maneuver. 128. 
Copy. The PO cut off is confirmed. Copy. And just a quick handover, we'll get that video signal back momentarily. Kazbeki, Moscow. Go ahead. So we have S-Band LOS right now. So could you please provide a running commentary? Copy. So there is the signal acquisition on course two set. Copy. Signal acquisition. And we have approach flag on the 44 display. Copy. So uh, there is the flag approach. The docking port of MRM-1 uh, is visible. There is K-15 command sent. So roll maneuver uh, is confirmed, and the range rate is um, minus 0 0.13. Copy. And we can see the docking port coming into view just to the left and a little bit down from the crosshairs, the docking port uh, on the Rasviat module. Um, down to the right is the service module of the Cygnus spacecraft. You can tell by the two large uh, circular solar arrays to either side, dock to node one. So it'll be just next door to this Soyuz spacecraft, uh, but there are just about 45 seconds or so left until the fly around maneuver is complete. Then we'll enter into what's known as station keeping. This will be an opportunity for them to fine tune their alignment, uh, get all of the final goes from the teams here on the ground and the crew. Complete. And uh, we have the con flag. Uh, it's a station keeping. And uh, could you please? Activate the uh, the ground light of the OSK uh, and the headlight is on. Floodlight is on. Copy. We confirm. And right now we're in that station keeping period, so we'll hold here for just a few moments until everything looks good, and then the teams will give the go and they'll begin that final approach. Again, the Soyuz flying itself. We give you a go to send uh, the command approach uh, from the display rendezvous, copy, in work. Command is being sent. And the crew has been given the go to start their final approach. Command at 13, 50, 350 is sent. Copy. Command is sent. And confirm that final approach has started. The, ra the range is 190 uh, meters and the range rate is 0 0.52. Copy. The GoPro camera that is on uh, the uh, straps of uh, the Tezuka suit is deactivated, unfortunately. So the docking port is right in the middle, and uh, the range is uh, 0 0.157. Copy. The Soyuz now slowly and methodically making its way on final approach to docking to the Rosviet module. Right now, they're about 140 meters. meters and the range rate is 0 0.83. It is closing rate. And uh, we can see the docking port very clearly.
Дальность 120, скорость 0,68 на, тормо... на движение. The range is 120 and the range rate minus 68. Copy. Спековочный узел видел отчетливо. We can see the docking port very clearly. Дальность 100, скорость 0,55, разближение. The range is 140, and the closing rate is minus 0,5, and the docking port is to the left a little bit, just one degree to the left. Copy. The range rate is minus 0.4, and the uh, crosshairs are aligned. Copy. Range 70, range rate point 34, and uh, the uh, target is in the center of the screen, and uh, the uh, angle of the docking port is in line uh, with the uh, range estimation. Just about 65 meters to go. Station in Soyuz flying right over central Kazakhstan right now, actually just a few hundred miles to the north of Baikonur, where the Soyuz launched just three hours and 15 minutes ago. 60, uh, closing rate of 0.27. Docking target is in the center of the screen and crosshairs are aligned. Range 53, closing uh, rate is 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Less than 50 meters to go. Core's automated rendezvous system guiding the spacecraft autonomously to its docking port at the Rosviet module. Three crew members inside. Only in space for three hours and 16 minutes, but already just less than 50 meters away. Their new home on board the space station. The target is uh, in the center. Crosshairs are aligned. Range is 45, closing rate 0.18. The SSVP uh, probe extension and uh, confirmed uh, transfer hatch closed, hooks open. Latches and this view giving you a great shot at the very top of the Soyuz. You can see just in the center of that metallic circle a small probe. That's the docking probe uh, that the Soyuz spacecraft extends. It's going to get captured by a docking cone on the bottom part of the Rosviet module, and at that point we'll have docking. Then a hard mate process follows that, where that probe will get retracted, pulling the Soyuz spacecraft into the docking port. And then they'll be able to close uh, a series of hooks on the Soyuz and the docking port itself, and then integrate uh, electrical and data connections between the two spacecraft. And then we'll have the Soyuz firmly attached to the Rosviet module. But as of right now, we are just about 34 meters away. 
equals two squares. And this gives a great view of that docking cone at the very bottom of Rosviet. It's just to the top and a little bit to the left of the center of the crosshair. Mission center. Docking target is in the center. Crosshairs are aligned. And you can see the docking target that they're aiming for just above the crosshair now. It's that small circle with a cross. And again, all of this being done autonomously right now. The Soyuz flying itself in, the crew monitoring, able to step in if necessary but for right now, just along for the ride. Twenty five meters in closing. SSVPG uh, is confirmed, range is twenty. And uh, range rate 0 0.09. The docking target is in the center. Crosshairs are aligned. Uh, the target is um, below uh, the crosshairs by uh, one degree. Copy. Range is 15. 15. Range rate is 0 0.01. This is the closing rate. Mark, could you please start the stopwatch? Copy. Uh, target is in the center, crosshair is aligned. And so he's just starting to edge behind the north of Grumman Cygnus vehicle. It's just about 12 meters away, so closing in on that docking port. And crosshair is aligned. Uh, and the docking target is below the crosshairs by one degree. You can see the docking cone just going out of the top of your view from here. This is the docking camera on the Soyuz. And it's headed for that docking target now just about right in the center of your screen, the, the circle with the cross. There is a small misalignment. And we will stand by for contact and docking. Side, copy. Range is three. The docking target is in the center. The crosshairs are hairs are aligned. Standing by for contact. Подвод касание механ сайдин цепка. Канта. Contact confirmed at 14.05.06. Mechanical link established. Uh, Contact and capture coming at 6.05 a.m. Central, 11.05 GMT. While stationed in Soyuz flew 262 statute miles over northern China. Again, the Soyuz docked 6.05 a.m. Central, 11.05 GMT. 
Ground Control Panel, copy. At this point, the station has been put into free drift, disabling thrusters, allowing relative motion to dampen out between the vehicles. Soon the docking probe will retract. We'll see the Soyuz spacecraft start to inch a little bit closer, and it'll pull it in uh, close to the, the docking cone, and that will then uh, set the vehicle up to enable a series of hooks and then power and data connections to uh, establish a link up between the Soyuz and the International Space Station. Aspects Moscow, go ahead. Uh, please say again, we did not copy. What should we deactivate? Moscow, this is Kazbex. How do you read us, Kazbex? Moscow, Kazbex, how do you read us? Uh, please repeat your last. We didn't copy. Command has been sent uh, to deactivate the TV system, and we are on page 50 and until R7. Parameters have been recorded and parameters inaudible. Mark, please close RPV-1, airflow regulator 1. Kazbex, this is Moscow. How do you read us? Loud and clear, we have closed inaudible. We're on page 57. And we're standing by for the first measurement. At 1408.3. Uh, please repeat your breaking up. SA uh, pressure on the pressure gauge is inaudible. 778. 778. 778. 778. 778. 778. 778. Inaudible. Please repeat BO pressure. Давление в БО бытовой отсек Orbital module pressure is eight two two. Copy. Давление в отсеке восемьсот семьдесят два. Eight seven two. Uh, this is the instrumentation compartment pressure. Uh, copy instrumentation module pressure 872. Affirmative. <laughs> And that was at uh, 1409, approximately. Uh, what was at that time? I didn't copy. And so at this moment, the crew on board the Soyuz giving some initial pressure readings inside the spacecraft. Meanwhile, we're waiting for confirmation of all the hooks to close. Uh, we have had confirmation that the docking probe is retracted. As we can see, the Soyuz has moved a little bit closer to that docking port. At this point, the Soyuz hooks have closed. 
at which point they command hooks on MRM1 of the Rossviet module to close. And then once that has occurred, we will have a hard mate and the Soyuz spacecraft will be firmly attached to the station. If you missed it though, that initial docking did come at 6.05 a.m. Central Time, 11.05 GMT, while the station and Soyuz were flying 262 miles over northern China. Hooks closed. Indication is illuminated. This is uh, the 15 indicator. Copy. Hooks closed. Indication illuminated. And gas 17 is illuminated as well. Latches retracted. Copy. Latches retracted. Standing by for the 11 illumination. Uh, SM probe retracted. Copy standing by. D11 indication is illuminated. Probe extension confirmed at. Uh, 141205. Copy. SSVP docking and internal transfer mode executed, correct? SSVP mode executed and sending the A command on SSVP docking and internal transfer system display. Copy. The A and Moscow is inaudible. From Baikonur. Standing by. Kazbeks, make sure that. Transmit button is pressed down. Did you say press down? Correct. Transmit button is pressed down. Kazbeki, prior Ragozin. Kazbek, this is Dmitry Ragozin calling from Baikonur. Uh, how do you read me? Uh, yes, uh, we can. We have you loud and clear. How are you feeling, Oleg? How is the crew doing? The crew is doing just fine. The vehicle uh, was very reliable. Everything was very reliable and stable. On behalf of the uh, State Commission, we would like to extend our congratulations congratulations to Oleg, to Mark, on the successful flight. He's in the short rendezvous profile. And we've had excellent results, excellent docking retraction. So we're very happy for you, uh, and everyone is happy for you, our colleagues and guests here. Of course, we were concerned about you, as always. But, um, <clears throat> Everything went nominally. Nominally is our favorite word. And once again, I'd like to congratulate you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'd like to turn the mic over to Mr. Maming. This is the Prime Minister of Kazakhstan, and he was watching the docking with me, and he would like to uh, congratulate you on the successful docking on behalf of the large delegation from Kazakhstan here. We've had a lot of uh, school uh, kids here and other guests, and uh, we were all very concerned about you. So I'm handing over the mic now. 
Alec Berter, Mark, I would like to congratulate you on the successful docking, and I would like to wish you success in execution of your flight program. Today's launch uh, took place uh, uh, prior to the 60th anniversary of the guidance flight, and hopefully uh, you will successfully execute all of the uh, goals and tasks of your flight program. So my best wishes to you. Thank you very much for your words. And of course, we will be doing our best uh, for, uh, the, uh, for uh, the development of the cosmonautics uh, in our country. And thank you very much. Congratulations on the upcoming holiday. Thank you. Kazbek Favor is calling. Uh, yes, Kazbek are here. Well, congratulations on your arrival to the ISS. Thank you very much and good afternoon. And uh, uh, we are ready to welcome you here. Uh, we're ready to execute everything and uh, uh, finally uh, meet you here. All right, we'll put it all in work now and see you soon. Okay, good luck. All right, so a lot of great words for the crew coming from teams back in Baikonur, including what sounded like the Prime Minister of Kazakhstan congratulating the crew on their successful launch and arrival at the International Space Station and making special note of how this comes just days before the 60th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's flight, which was the first human in space and kicked off uh, the era of human spaceflight in which we now live. Uh, we did get confirmation all hooks are closed on the spacecraft, so it is secured. They're in the process of connecting the power and data, and then the crew will get out of their suits out of their seats first and then out of their suits and then they'll start stepping through leak checks and eventually getting ready to open up the hatches. So we're going to take a break for a little while before we get a chance to welcome Mark Vandehei, Oleg Novitsky and Piotr Dubrov aboard the International Space Station. We will be back in just a little over an hour um, to resume our coverage as we get ready for the hatch opening. So again, all these times in Central uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour, we'll have a video file of all of the post-launch activities, and then we'll be back at 7.30 a.m. Central Time for hatch opening coverage with the hatches between the two spacecraft expected to be open right around 8 a.m. We'll see the new crew members come on board, meet their Expedition 64 crewmates, and we'll officially have 10 people on board the International Space Station. So be sure to tune back in in just a little bit. We're not done with this flight to the station. A little bit more to go. So we will be back in just a little over an hour, and we'll be sure to take some more Twitter questions using that hashtag AskNASA while we wait for the hatch to open. So we will see you then. Signing off once more, this is Mission Control Houston.